Coach, what's going on? We're back at it again, huh? Yep, back at it. What is this, our fourth one or fifth? I think this is going on number seven, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. We've been around that long? Time flies. Time flies. <laughs> wow. And we're not even having fun yet. <laughs> All right, Coach. So right off the bat, we had uh, some good events this past weekend, some controversial. Um, let's start off with Bellator 289, Stotts versus Sabatello. Well, why don't we start off with the earlier fights? Finish yep. with Stotts versus Sabatello. What do you think? Let's go there. So what did you think about Pat Downey versus uh, Christian Eccles? Well, that was a perfect example of, of being a, a pure uh, Division I uh, standout is not enough anymore. You know, you have to have more in, in, in your arsenal than just great wrestling. And Pat Downey was uh, the victim of that, in my opinion. I was watching his stand-up and it, it wasn't it was nowhere nowhere near up to par. So when the other guy was able to defend his wrestling at the very end, when Downey got a little tired, he was able to land the hammers on him, and uh, that, that therefore Downey went down. And as a result of being too one dimensional, in my opinion, it's uh, you know too much of a wrestler base, and you need to become more well rounded. Um, you know, case in point, even with us, you know, with Kyle Crutchmer, Kyle. Kyle, although he is doing everything well, he's done everything right. He just he's just needs more experience, you know, and his opponent, you know, uh, had the luxury of being able to defend the takedowns, you know, and uh, being able to mix up the stand up. And that's where his opponent won is that his stand up was better than Kyle's, although Kyle's wasn't bad. He's getting better, but it needs to get better if you're going to compete with the elite. And uh, that's that's the, that's. The blueprint right there for you know what you need to do to become you know the best and, and you, you got to be well-rounded in all areas you just can't have one one particular you know technique or one particular uh, go-to move like you know what I call your queen if your queen is being stalled out you know you better have something else to, to fall back on meaning that you better have other pieces your arsenal at your disposal to be able to proceed and go ahead and, and do with your attacks because if your wrestling isn't working then you got to use your boxing if your boxing isn't working then you got to use you know your, your your tie boxing if tie boxing isn't working then maybe you go to judo you know i mean there's so many elements in, in, involved in, in mma and you have to be well-rounded to be able to go to the next level yeah definitely definitely i thought a lot of people were expecting pat downey to come out and just destroy this guy Eccles, and he did at the beginning, you know, but Echoes uh, weathered the storm and then came with the striking. Like you said, that was it. Yeah. No, he, Donnie was very impressive at the very beginning, but, you know, I don't think his jujitsu is as good as it needs to be, you know, because if it was, he would have just destroyed the guy on the ground. The guy wouldn't have been able to get up, you know, so you need to be well-rounded in all areas. You know, and uh, Downey's got a lot to catch up to because the, the higher level guys are going to be able to deal with his wrestling. And he, he better be able to deal with their striking because if he doesn't, then that's not to be the first time he's going to be uh, taken out. It'll, it'll happen again to him. So, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, he's a young guy. He's going to learn. He's going to get better. He's got good coaching. So they'll, they'll, they'll fix their mistakes like everybody, just like Kyle. Kyle. Kyle's a great kid, you know, and he's going to be back stronger. He's just going to be better from this. And if you don't get better from this, then you better look at another alternative, you know, for what you want to do in, in a career because uh, your career is going to be cut real short. Yeah. Yep. I agree. And of course, I mean, Kyle Krishmer, he's one of the hardest workers at the gym. So it's not like he's not putting in the effort and the work. Um, like you said, it's just probably time and experience. Yeah, no, he's putting in the work. He is put, definitely putting in the work. He's not, he's not by any means somebody that doesn't work hard. He works very hard, and and uh, he just needs to catch up more on the stand up and put it all together correctly. But he puts in the work. No, no, no complaints there. It's just his best just wasn't good enough for this particular fight, you know. And you know, it's all matchups too. I mean, he he could fight somebody else that that that, that probably yeah. beat this guy that he lost to and he could beat them. It's, it's just a matchup type thing. And he just met a guy that, that can deal uh, well with his wrestling and he was a better striker, you know, but we knew that we knew going into the fight, the guy was a better striker and the objective goal was to take it to the ground 
that was the objective goal. And, uh, you know, Kyle tried, you know, he shoot, reshoot, shoot, reshoot. So he tried, he, he did the best he could, you know, and uh, it just wasn't good enough this time around. That's all. We just got to move on. Everybody at some point hits that wall, right? And uh, this was his wall. So he'll rebound, he'll get better, and then uh, he'll, move, he'll, you know, he'll learn. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, 289 also brought in the, the Benham World Grand Prix uh, semifinals. You had uh, Mix versus Tiger. Yeah, let's call him Tiger. I call him Tiger. <laughs> uh, that that was a fight there with, with Patchy. He... Hey man, he he's he was at first one of those that that had potential, but now I'm not so sure that people aren't going to look at him as potentially the favorite going into this fight. Super impressive, you know what he did to Tiger. Wow, that's that's uh, pretty incredible. To, you know he submitted someone that hadn't been submitted. You yes, know? And, and this is only if I'm not mistaken, this is Tiger's second loss. Same. And I think his second loss, yeah. So, and he's, you know, Tiger's been around, and, you know, he, he's a tough customer. So, him being submitted by Patchy, and Patchy had him in trouble almost all through the whole fight. Yeah. Controlled him on the ground, and and uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, we'll see, but he just might very well be the, you know, the betting favorite going into this fight. We'll see what happens in a fight. Anything can happen. You know, the favorite turns into... <laughs> The underdog, and before you know it, you know, uh, the underdog, uh, that's the, the less guy that's on the betting line, you know, he's end up uh, the winner, you know, a lot of times that happens. And what do we see? A lot of uh, underdogs, right? And uh, which, which was it? this, this, the Bellator event was a lot of underdogs or was it? No, the, the UFC, UFC, the UFC 282. 282, all those underdogs were winning. So you can't say because you're the favorite, you're going to win. You just, you just don't know. Yeah. Just. Oh, but uh, yeah, that was good. And then you got Liz Carmouche, you know, did a rematch, you know, with uh, Juliana uh, Velasquez. Yeah, uh, Juliana Velasquez. And this was a rematch from the, the first one when, uh, you know, uh, the gorilla won, uh, won the title, you know, and it was by controversy because he had her in the crucifix and she was raining elbows on her and Mike Beltran you know, um, stop the fight because Juliana wasn't doing anything and the elbows kept landing and landing. And I mean, I don't know what do you do as a ref. You, you, even though she wasn't hurt, but she was, she was, uh, she didn't appear to be looking to get out. She, she was just taking punishment, taking a lot and, of damage, uh, you know, and, but you know, it was like clear cut that, okay, yeah, maybe that one didn't hurt. Maybe you weren't hurt, but you know, it was just a matter of time before the elbows get cleaner. Who knows? It's, it's a rough call to be in, but there was a controversy behind that. And uh, this time around, uh, there was no controversy whatsoever. Uh, she learned, Carmouche learned from the first fight. She had great coaching. They had to go right straight to her wrestling points, the strong points. And she utilized that and didn't give her any opportunity and, and uh, just, you know, did what she should have done the first time, to be honest with you. That's the way she should have fought the first time. And uh, she's the dominant girl on the ground. And she's got good wrestling, got good submission skills. You know, so I think that's, uh, you know, that's a good way for her to continue to, to fight. And, and it's going to be difficult for, for someone to take her. I'm telling you, if she keeps fighting like that, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And then, of course, you have the last Bantamweight World Grand Prix fight with uh, Stodds versus uh, Sabatello. Yeah, that was an interesting one because those guys hyped up the fight throughout this whole thing. They're great marketing uh, for this fight. I think uh, they were a big reason why a lot of eyeballs tuned in because they did a good job of marketing themselves along with Bellator marketing this fight in particular. They did a good job of it. They, they knew these two guys were firecrackers. Both loved to talk, both entertaining, and uh, they delivered, man. They delivered. Yeah. They delivered. I, you know, the the ending of the fight, it was like one of those fights where, you know, uh, Sabatello controlled him, but he wasn't doing uh, any damage, you know. So I don't know how you award him the victory based on holding, you know. I, I just don't, you know, where his thoughts, he was doing the damage, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was a close fight. It was a close fight. Like if they'd have given it to Sabatello, I'd have been, okay, but I didn't think he won. I would have been like that, but I would have been, okay, they gave it to Sabatello. 
but I thought Stotts won, you know, three to two. And, and uh, you know, but it was a good fight, entertaining fight, definitely entertaining fight. But I think that Sabatello's problem was when he held him down, he, he didn't get any submission attempts going and he wasn't striking. He wasn't doing anything with uh, the, the advantages he had. You know, that's just my opinion, uh, what I thought of that fight. You know, he, he could have done more damage and he didn't. And therefore, I think that cost them. I think it cost them the fight. So now you have the final Stotts versus uh, Mix. How do you see that one? Uh, like I said earlier, I, I'm kind of leaning a little weird towards Mix. Actually, I think uh, he he impressed me so much the way he dominated the Tiger that I'm like, wow, he's just an exciting fighter. Yeah, this. Well, you know, let's see if he can't dominate uh, Stotts like that and control him like that. I, I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen because Stotts will have something to say about that on the striking end of it. But, uh, you know, um, let's see. You know, very interesting. I don't know who will win. I, I, I'm kind of slightly, very slightly favoring, uh, you know, Patsy based on what he did uh, this weekend. Uh, I'm favoring him slightly based on that only. Jeez, okay. Uh, well, let's move over to UFC 282. What a weird, weird card from top to bottom, which is weird. Yeah, yeah, top to bottom, it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it was, uh, it was one of those kind of like, yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a weird one, you know, and uh, the main event on the prelims, you know, was, was uh, that uh, Rojas kid, right? Raul Rosas Jr. versus uh, Jay Perrin. Yeah, Rosas, I said Rojas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he. Uh, you know what? I'm. I'm. I'm very interested to see what he brings to the table later because he has the charisma, he has the attitude, he loves the limelight. He he potentially is a star, huge star on the rise. I agree. Um, based on everything I've seen from him, his personality, his fighting style, his dominance, um, we could very well be seeing a future great superstar. You know, uh, that's that's what I saw in him um i think why dana white and the crew picked him is because i think they saw the same thing uh before because the first time i've seen him so i i definitely understand why dana was so high on this kid uh he is the real deal and uh he's only 18 he's hungry and he's got motivation you know yeah. uh, i'm gonna take care of my family i'm gonna buy he doesn't have a driver's license from what i hear and uh, he's gonna buy his mom a car so she can drive home. He said to, what he said that he's gonna so he his mom so can she drive can him drive him to the UFC PI. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks so calm and so collective and like no nerves whatsoever, just ice cold. Uh, and when the bell rang, he just came out and performed. And then some yeah. of those shots he was taking, and then just uh, his strength, you know, with the single leg he picked up Perrin all the way up and dumped him on his back. It was just insane. No, it was it was uh, very impressive. He's a good height. He got good strength. He got uh, you know good jujitsu, good wrestling, excellent, excellent jujitsu. Uh, good, good relaxation. His stand up is, looks like it's just gonna, you know, his stand up is is right at this level, very low level for a striker, but you can see the the vast amount of improvement that he's gonna make. It's gonna be crazy how he's gonna just with what he has. He's going to destroy people on the stand up also, you know, with the more uh, practice he puts into it. And he's just only going to get better on the grappling and, and the whole bit, you know, and fight experience a whole bit. He's only seven and oh. So he's still very much a newbie, you know. So right. the ceiling is high for him. And he's doing something really smart. He's speaking Spanish and he's yes. carrying the flag. So he's, he's, he's catering to his heritage. To Mexico, to all Latin, to all the Latin American fans. So he's doing a very good, smart marketing thing there. And uh, uh, whether that's him or whether someone's pushing him to do that, uh, that's very smart. Um, I think he's going to have a huge following. You know, I think he's one of the uh, next up and coming Latin Hispanic uh, superstars. In all your uh, years of coaching, have you ever seen somebody at that uh, young of age? Um, kind of level out to Rosas as far as their calmness, their just way of handling themselves and the way they compete? Um, yeah, Usman, 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 uh, Habib's cousin. I've seen Usman when he was young. I've seen 
clips of him. I seen him in Abu Dhabi. I seen oh, he's yeah, he's pretty right much away. Like, you knew, right away, you knew yeah. he was special. Yeah, I knew he was special too, and and he is. He's obviously he's the world champ. So, uh, yeah, not many though. <laughs> not many. Rare. Though. Like rare. very rare. He's a rarity, but he's not the only one. But he is rare. Okay, let's move on real quick. Let's talk about Mr. Dermot Till and uh, Duplessis. Did you watch that one at all? Yes, I did. Uh, Darren Till, um, it appeared uh, that he was going to get stopped in the first round, and he kept focusing on trying to tell the ref he's okay, he's okay, but he's taking all those that punishment, you know? So I'm like, gee, you know, what the hell is he doing? You know, it, it should be more focused on, you know, action instead of letting the ref know he's okay you know and he took a lot of unnecessary damage i felt and then uh he got the opportunity he exploded he did well he made a very entertaining fight uh duplessis he man that guy got tired but he has no quitting him there's no no quitting him and most fighters would have quit he didn't quit and it's because he didn't quit is he won that fight because he could have easily lost that fight had he you know gave into the the cardio issues that he appeared to be having you know and then there until uh, it looked like he was uh, injured you know he injured his knee again or i don't know his acl he 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 was not his normal self no um but he was entertaining nevertheless very entertaining i i enjoyed i enjoyed the fight it was an entertaining fight entertaining fight do you think if Darren Till was not, you know, speaking with the ref, telling him, hey, I'm okay, I'm okay, that it would have been possible for the ref to actually stop it early? No, now- no, because because he wasn't hurt. And, and, and if he would have not focused on telling the ref and focused on getting out, the ref would have seen his focusing on getting out. A lot of those shots weren't landing either. No, you know? they were being blocked a lot. Yeah, a they lot were being blocked a lot. So he didn't have to focus too much on that is all I'm saying. Yeah, tell the ref I'm okay and then move get into action i'm okay move but he was still i'm okay i'm okay it's like dude he he took more unnecessary shots when you're trying to tell the ref you're okay just he knows you're okay once thumbs up and don't say nothing and constantly trying to get out out of your situation that's what he didn't do as as you heard the commentators allude to it that he should be focused more on getting out rather than focus on letting the ref know that he's okay yeah, his left eye was completely shut uh, when he came out for the second. I thought the, you know, that could have been stopped right there too. His eye was just completely shut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, he, you know, but he's a warrior, and uh, uh, a lot of people are alluding that maybe he should retire. And I read somewhere where he's not retiring, and he shouldn't retire because there's no need to retire. He's still young, and uh, hey, his boxing looked sharp in the second. Yeah, his boxing yeah. looked extremely sharp. And I think if it wasn't for him getting injured in the second, you know, because of the knee, when uh, Duplessis took his back and they went down to the ground, his knee kind of went back and yeah. toward the ACL. Yeah, and then the next fight, uh, with the uh, the Price. replacement for Robbie Lawler. Which one was that? Pantanibo, Pantanibo. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That was a, a very interesting fight. Uh, the corner uh, told him that coming in the third round, you need to stop him and and. Uh, Man, he come out there, he, he let the hammers go. And you got to remember, too, I mean, he was practicing for a southpaw. So to get the range, to get the timing down, um, that was that was something that was uh, uh, giving him a little trouble. And then he started getting into gear, especially when his corner uh, told him, you lost the last two, you need to stop this guy, more or less. And he went out there. He went guns a blaze and he went hunting for that 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 KO and uh, this is uh, what you need a corner to do because reality is he might have won one round the first round yeah. you know or the second who knows you know but it was it was one of those where I would take caution to the winner and assume we lost them both and just go out for the KO take the, because worst case you win the round best case you do to get the KO and you stop it and, and meaning you win the round and you actually won one of those other rounds so what the advice that the corner gave him was I thought was perfect advice you know go out and finish him you know and, and that's what he did he went out and finished him. so in your opinion on Alex Morono's side do you recommend oh, I don't want to say recommend but what are your thoughts on taking those uh you know those those late fights 
Well, it was a great opportunity for him. He, he what, he has seven losses to his record, what, 14 and seven or 20 and seven or something like that. Uh, 22 he, he and was, seven. Yeah, he's not necessarily known as a top dog by any means. Uh, even though he, he took a chance on this one, it brought up his stock some. So he didn't get diminished too much. But uh, uh, in a situation like his, I think it was okay. He got put in the limelight. I never knew who he was. So there you go. Yeah. You know, I didn't know who he was. I know who he is now. You know, so it was a risk. Uh, of course, but it was a gamble worth taking, and I, I, I think he did nothing wrong in taking that fight. And honestly speaking, because of where he's at anyways, I don't think there's anything wrong with him taking another fight like that. Okay. Some guys are dark horses, and they got to do what they got to do to get out there, you know? Yeah. Okay. Now, moving on, the big controversy fight, Patty Pimlet versus Jared Gordon. Yeah. Your thoughts. Did Patty well, lose- uh, well, to me, um, uh, I gave Jared the first round, you know, and, and I gave Jared the last round, you know. Um, so for me, Jared won, but they were, in all honesty, somewhat close. And um, was it a robbery, um, like some people might have alluded to? Um I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe because I didn't think the third round that 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 Patty the Batty won. I, I thought he lost the third round. I don't know because he did he did nothing with the one minute he had. He was controlled for almost four minutes, if I remember correctly, and then he took over for the last minute. But he didn't do an incredible damage for that. So how do you equate one minute of control versus almost four minutes of control? And the damage that was done was none on either side. You yeah. know, I just I just don't know how you can take that away from Gordon. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought I thought he he did the most control. None of them did any damage. None of them had any submission attempts, really. So, who should win that fight? You know, based on uh, on what? You know, uh, ring generalship, uh, damage. Uh, what what are they what are they basing it on? You know, if it's control, that they both had equal control. No. <laughs> one had almost control. triple the amount of control. So why would you give it to the guy that had less control? So for me, uh, you know, definitely, you know, Gordon won that fight. And my, if I'm judging it, I would have gave it to him. Uh, I know uh, Patty said that, that people go against him because they don't like him. I don't think that's true. I think he's very likable. I like him. He's a great sportsmanship. <laughs> I, I like him. I like him. I think he's great for the sport. Um but I, I, if I was judging, he wouldn't have won that fight um, based on my score, you know. Um, but, hey, he won that fight. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, he's the UFC's baby. So the, this, the UFC has zero to do with the judging and who gets put there to, 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 to judge a fight, you know. Uh, what the UFC can do if they have a judge that appears to be thinking they're program meaning a judge that is always bad they can put a complaint uh a grievance with the commission the state athletic commission and say hey this particular judge really doesn't do well for us we we request that he not be assigned to this particular event and they may get the request uh honored and that person that judge may not get put on that card but there's no guarantee that will happen and uh you know what people don't understand is this is a state-run program. The UFC has zero to do with the State Athletic Commission and who they appoint as refs, who they appoint uh, as judges. The UFC can ask for certain judges and certain refs, but that doesn't mean it gets granted. That's that's something the State Athletic Commission can grant or not grant. So, you know, when people are thinking, oh, they're just protecting their golden child, that's absurd. You know, they're not doing nothing. Do they want Patty to win? Of course. Of course they do. Of course. If I'm a promotion and, and he's drawing me big eyeballs, of course I want him to win too. But, you know, I have no control over the State Athletic Commission. And and you have no control over these judges. And too many people think, oh, these judges are on the take. And Okay, yeah, I know it's possible that all could happen. But realistically, do you really think – that that all these secrets would be kept forever if there was no. that much controversy. Look what happened. No, no, no. 
in, uh, in that one situation that happened in, in Korea, right? When that one fighter uh, reported himself because they wanted him to take a dive. Look what happened there. That got blown up right away. You think that something like that's a, a, a rarity that, that just one guy, everybody keeps a secret? No, it's because judging and fixing judging and refs is very, very, very tricky to do and accomplish. Yeah, I'm not saying it can't be done and it hasn't been done because it has, but I'm just saying very it's complex. Very, it's not very complex, and it's very, uh, it's a rare a thing that happened. It's not a, it's not a common thing. You know, it's not common at all. Now, uh, that's from my experience and everything I know. Uh, there was no fight fixing here. It was just poor judging, and on that, the way you take care of that is, you know, if that particular uh, judge. If you look at his, his statistics and him judging MMA fights and he's always gets it wrong, then if I was a commission or, or if I'm a fighter, like for instance, me, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I had a situation where I had one of the re famous referees was going to referee one of Daniel Cormier's fight. And uh, I was concerned with him because he seems to screw up with us, you know, mm. and you know, I didn't want him to to ref our match. So basically, the reason why I know these things is because I called the commission and they told me, "Well, you have to you have to put in a, a, a request of and course. you have to get a legit request. You can't just say, oh, this this uh, this uh, referee, he just he's always got it in for us.' It's like you can't say us. It's got to be you got to give examples of where this referee was for." Yeah, there's got to be facts of him screwing up somewhere else, and you got to show uh, dates and times—not times, but you got to fight and dates and the whole bit. You got—you can't just say he's going to be unfair against us. You got to show uh, proof of of your grievance, you know. And if you have a legit proof, then submit it, and then they'll do what they're going to do. And if they assign them, uh, you know, tough shit, they assign them. If they if they take him out, that means they believe you, you know. So. It's a very complex thing. It's not easy to do, um, but it can be done if you have an issue with a with a judge or a particular referee. You can you can't uh, look into see what you can do to get them not to be involved in your particular match. But like you said, it's a request to NSAC, and NSAC has the final word. So it's just asking, and it's not always going to go in your favor. No, it's not always going to go in your favor. And, and uh, the end of the day, uh, you know, Nevada State Athletic Commission, they rule, uh, you know, those situations. They, 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 they have their, their structures and you can't do anything about it. Like, you know, uh, that's just the way it is. Um, I mean, how did you score the fight? I thought, honestly, that Jared won. Yeah. Jared won. He won round and one. Round two was a little close. And then round three, Jared won. Yeah, round round one and uh, and round three. If I gave Patty any, it would be round two. Round you two, know? if any, yeah. if any, if any. I, I, you know, and like I said, I thought I thought he, you know, the one thing it showed is that he has a long way to go. Yes, he, he's he is definitely world class, but his fame is bigger than his ability at the present time. But he's only going to get better. He's still young. He's still young. He's still cocky. He's still he has that swagger. So yeah. for people to think, oh, he's he's met his ceiling. Uh -huh. No, wake, wake up. He's going to be better the next time. He's just going to get better. The, the Patty the Bat is just going to get better. He's an entertainer. Um, it's 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 I mean, him winning, it, it helped propel the sport even more, especially in the UK. In the you UK. know, him winning the way he did left a lot of sour uh, grapes for a lot of people because, you know, like if I was the judge, he wouldn't have won. Yeah. But the good thing is now we seem to go back and say, hey, that one was a close one. Now we got to get on it. Your striking needs to be a little crisper. You can't be throwing these looping uh, uh, overhand rights or looping hooks. You have to tuck your chin in and you have to actually, you know, get with the program for the next one. Yeah, that left hook seemed to be like he was a magnet for that left hook. Oh, he know, was catching him uh, all the time. Yeah, yeah. And Jared kept slamming them with, uh, you know, uh yeah, the, the the fight you know you know it's, it's just crazy you know and, and then you know another situation too with jared you know some people are saying like even Dana white was saying that uh jared threw the fight away you know uh like probably he's probably alluding to the third round 
where where he was holding him and he wasn't doing much damage. I agree to some degree on that, but I don't agree because you know Patty didn't do anything for that one minute. He was no. free. No, that was my issue. It's like, well, okay, yeah, you're right. He should have been doing better than that. He should have been hit and punching and et cetera, et cetera. And it would have been clear cut in his favor. But what was the other guy doing when he had his minute and what, a little bit over a minute, right? He had a little bit over a minute, but he didn't do very much for that either. No. So, so I don't understand where you would give, uh, you know, uh, Patty the, the, the nod. You know, I don't, I, I think most people uh, complaining, I think it's justified, you know, and, like I said, you know, and, and, but that's the way it goes. You know, there's one of those situations where you shouldn't let it go to the judges. And, and if you're looking at it from that perspective, uh, Jared let it go to the judges. So yeah. so you can fault him for that 100%. He let it go to the judges. And that's probably a game plan like, like Dana said. He probably shouldn't have done that, you know. So I can agree on that much. That he probably shouldn't have done that. But I still felt he won, even though he shouldn't have done what he did. Yeah, definitely. All right, coach, getting to the final fight of the night, 282 main event fight. You had Jan versus Magomed. What would you think about that one, coach? Uh, I thought it was, you know, for me, uh, it was going to be another Dagestani uh, winning a world title, and I was kind of expecting that. And, uh, you know, it, it started out, you know, uh, First round kind of felt like okay, it's going like I thought. Then uh, Jan, uh, you know, he started getting them leg kicks in there and destroying both sides. You know, yes, shin to shin, he hit shin to shin, and and that was like wow, uh, that that's that's uh, that was pretty impressive of what he did. Jan worked on both of the legs, so so I, I I thought clearly, you know, the first round. Okay, let me ask you this: Who won the first round? <clears throat> that one's tough. It's tough, okay, but I well, think. Who, but I, no, just go through it. Who won the first round? I think Blahovich did get the first round. You thought he got the first round? It was close, but he got the first round. Okay, so if he got the first round, then he got the second and the third. I think. <laughs> I think Jan got the second one too. Okay, then he got the third. Yes. Okay. So, don't get me so wrong. Don't the, get me wrong. Uh, but I'm just saying, you you felt he got the first. I kind of gave Magomed the first. I thought Magomed won the first. But you're saying Jan won the first. But what I'm saying, I'm just trying to tell you, it was close. Super it was close. close. It was close, you know. Second wasn't. It was clear Jan's round. Third yes. wasn't either. It was clearly his round two. Yes. So, so two and three was clearly his. One was up in the air. And one could have been his, could have been Magomed. I gave Magomed. I thought he got it. I thought Ankle I've got the, I thought he won. I thought he won the fight. Uh, uh, you know, and and one thing that was great about him, he looked like a person that was done, finished. He looked done. He, looked, he was done. He looked done. And all of a sudden, he came out and he did what he should have done in the beginning, u- utilized his great wrestling, wrestling. And, yeah. and, and a top control. Uh, to to dominate all the rounds, and he didn't do that. And I was kind of surprised, you know, that he pulled it off at the very end as damaged as he was. That just shows the kind of heart and courage that, that he had going into the fight. But I think the strategy might not have been the best because no. had he done that at the beginning, there would have been no question in anybody's mind who won that fight because he finished so dominant. He finished so dominant that in people's eyes, uh, I think they forget the round in question, in my opinion, was the first round. And I gave it to yes. Mark. I gave it three to two. I gave him one, four, and five easily. To me, it was easily. He won one, four, and five. So I gave him all that. But you just said you thought Jan won the first one. Okay, so obviously me thinking easily maybe wasn't so easy because you thought different. And uh, maybe other people thought Jan might have won the first two. So guess what? I, I mean, what am I going to say? Robbery? You know, this is one of the situations where, you know, obviously you heard Magame say, I don't know, I'll fight for another organization. You know, that was just that uh, frustration. Frustration. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't meaning that. He didn't know. You know, when, when you felt you won the fight and your opponent, your opponent felt you won the fight, 
you know, it's kind of hard because your opponent is giving you all that energy that says, no, this guy won. I didn't win this fight. You know, but I think Bohovic is going to look back. He's going to look at his fight. He's going to go, wait a minute. That first round was very close. Maybe I won that first round. And I know I won the second and the third. And, and, and that's what I think is going to happen. Bohovic is going to look back. He goes, wait a minute. I, yeah, I think I won that first round. And you know what? I'm going to say he didn't because I didn't feel he did. But... You know, there's going to be people like you and other people that feel he did. And I can't say, no, you're wrong, because right. it was a close first round. You know, it was a close first round. And, and, and uh, the, the thing is, the last two rounds were so dominant. They were so dominant that could they have gave him a, a, a two point on those rounds? They did it or did they? I don't, I don't think they did. Right. I don't recall the scorecard. It was just everywhere, but it could have gone to Nate, both of those. Yeah, he was so dominant, you know, so so I don't know. I don't know. I, all I know is uh, there must have been a 10-8 round in there for it to be a draw like that. One of it them had, had to, to be. be, yeah. Had to be, had to be. I so was just those, shocked. Yeah, I was just so shocked he, that even in the fourth, he came in wrestling the way he did with his legs so compromised. Yeah. To take those shots, I was like, whoa. Yeah, he he, he was really impressive. And, uh, you know, now I heard that uh, – uh, that uh, Dana White is is putting, uh, you know, uh, for the title fight now, uh, you know, in in Brazil, and it's going to be uh, Glover, uh, Glover versus uh, who's Glover fighting? Uh, yeah. Hill. Yeah, just something Hill, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Glover's going to fight Hill for the title. Do you think that makes sense? That's... Because he was scheduled. Uh, Hill was scheduled to fight Anthony Smith. So do you think that makes sense? Only in the sense that it keeps the title contention going. And, and, and you know, because, you know, uh, uh, you know, Jan and, and, and Magomed, they're not going to be able to fight anytime no, soon. No, no. So, so they get another title fight going. They, 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 they get eyeballs to the screen for another situation. Glover should have been the one fighting for the title in the first place. So it's justified. Uh, but a lot of fans are going to be happy about that because they wanted to see, you know, Maga hit Magomed go back after the title. But I think what ended up happening happening is I think they'll probably do a rematch with those two guys, and then the winner of that will fight, uh, you know, for the whoever the champion at that time. But but the the remember this is think about what's going to happen here. It's gotten into a big old pickle now because the champ who left the title when he's rehab. He's fighting for the title. Right. right away, his first fight, is fighting for the title. So whoever is going to be the champ at that time, he's going to fight him next. So that means that and Clyde and, and, and Jan are going to be on the back burner for a little while. So they might as well fight each other and then get payday and then wait for the winner of that because that's what's going to end up happening. There's going to be a, 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 a you know backlog on, on what's happening with that that division because of, of the situation, right? And especially those two guys, I can't see any of them being happy about, no. uh, you know, someone else going for the title. I could not see them being happy. Well, that you was saw them. They were both distraught, you know, when they announced yeah. the, the draw. Both yeah. of them. Well, I, I, I thought Bohovic thought he lost. Because he said, no, no, I'll give it to him. You know, because he goes, he goes, well, I didn't win. Remember, he said, I didn't win. I didn't feel I like won. But he goes, I have to review the, the video. That and was then smart of him to say. Video, when he reviews the video, he's going to say, you know what? I can see how I maybe won this fight or how it was a draw. I'm yeah. telling you, he would be justified in saying that because when you watch it, you go, ah. But to me, I thought he lost. You know, I, I gave it to Magomed. I thought Magomed won. For me, if I'm a judge, one, four, and five. Uh, Modern bit. Yeah. So, you know, Blahovic is only one, uh, two, and three. That's it. You know, but some people thought one, two, three. And, you know, I didn't judge it that way, but I can see how other people did because the first round was close. Super it was close. close. It was close. So, depends how you have it judged, right? Yep. What else are you going to do? I mean, that's just the way it goes. That, uh, you know, that light heavyweight division is pretty jam-packed, you know, with uh, five guys that can interchange. They can with all no interchange. With no issues. With no issues. Just plug them in. 
yeah, you're the champ. Okay, you're the champ next week. Okay, uh, two months from now, he's going to be the champ. I mean, there's five guys in there that are good enough to be the champion, in my opinion. And uh, I thought I thought uh, Magomed was going to be head above everybody else, but he needs to clear up how he fights to be head above everybody else because he clearly is the best striker out of all those. But he's also clearly the best ground guy out of all those guys. But he has to learn how to utilize both at the right time. And I think that he went with the wrong game plan, in my opinion. I thought I thought he should have implemented uh, his grappling base first. Yes. Because Owens didn't have that. No. He didn't have – he couldn't deal with him on the ground. So why stand with the guy? And just because you're that good – doesn't mean you should stand with somebody. He should have took him down right from the get-go because I know he could have. He's that good, you know. So until he proves that he can fight that dominant, uh, you know, we'll see. But he's still young enough to do it. Um, out of all the guys, I think he's the best one. And he probably deserves the title more so than anybody. But he's got to go out and improve it and do the right thing. Now, did he do enough on this one? In my opinion, he did. So did he? did he get the bad end of the judge's decision on this one. Yes. Absolutely. Had he had different judges like me in there, he would have been the champ. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. You let it go to the judges, and that was bad. You shouldn't have let it go to the judges. Yeah. When you can prevent it from going to the judges, you do. Coach, one more question before you go. And I know we didn't discuss this earlier, so it's going to be a little a little audible there. What do you think about... Uh, McGregor trying to come back with an exemption from the six month USADA testing? Well, I think, you know, uh, in his particular situation, you know, he had an injury, you know, it was a gruesome injury. Uh, everybody knows that, that, you know, anabolic steroids, uh, you know, can rehab a situation like that quick. And if you know anything about how USADA works, you can ask to be out of the testing pool. You know, and you get on whatever you need to get on to rehab yourself, and then you come back. So from the point of, you know, did he do it? You know, something to do something illegal? Well, apparently not. He was not in testing, so he rehabbed himself. How he rehabbed? Who knows? We know by looking. You can tell he he did what he needed to do. Huge. But listen, when he comes back into the testing pool, he has to be clean for a certain amount of time before he can compete. So it guess is what? Fair for him to by the time he fights, he'll be he'll be good to go. So did was he on the secret sauce? Absolutely, in my opinion. Absolutely. But he wasn't being tested, so there's no foul because he's not competing. So before he comes back, he'll be in the testing pool again. So there's the there's that loophole, you know? And, and okay, it's like you you tell me what are you gonna do? What fighter if they know they can heal quicker doing this little, you know, little Mickey Mouse stuff that they do, you know, then most fighters are going to take that avenue and get healed quicker, you know. Um, is it fair? Mm, probably not. But is it illegal what he did? Well, it's not illegal because they know he's doing it. So and the, he's not testing and he's not fighting. So the trade-off should be, if you're doing the Mickey Mouse stuff per se, should you be forced to wait the six months like everyone else, or you should be offered an exemption to come back sooner? I personally think he should wait the six months, just like everyone else. I know you rehabbed and it was a gruesome I, injury I, I, and whatever I you think, did to do, I think it's but wait the six months. For everybody else, everybody else, he shouldn't get no exemption. Uh, it I should agree. be just like everybody else, but because he he creates the money that they're, they're going to create that that specific for him you know like for instance i'll give you an example i heard rumored this is rumored that uh when brock was trying to come back he, he tested hot I heard. so 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 he couldn't come back in because he tested hot you know so they 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 pulled him out you know so before he can even get back in the situation he was out you know because he tested hot so he wasn't even in back in the, the testing pool because it tested hot. So I don't know. I, I think what USADA does, it, it really does keep the sport as clean as possible. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to, to play with them because, you know, uh, when you're ready to fight, you got to be clean. Yeah. You got to be clean. So, so, 
you know, you can say, well, hey, yeah, this guy, he benefited from it because he got healthy. Now his body's stronger than ever, yet he's off the system, like the sauce and whatnot. But his body got the benefits of all that. That's all true, too. But competition-wise, he's clean. I don't know. That's that's a sticky, uh, slippery slope there, you know. What's the right answer? I, I don't know. I think maybe letting everybody know they can do that. They can get off testing and get on whatever you need to, to rehab yourself. And when you're back on rehab, you know, uh, I don't know. you got to stay on the, like, what, what they got, Henry Segudo? He's he's back on the testing, right? Six months. He, yeah, he would have six months. Yeah, so, so why didn't he get an exception? He wasn't injured. I know. That's what I'm saying. So why does he get an exception? You know, yeah. why should, why does he have to wait six months? Why can't he come back sooner? So I remember reading something recently where they actually said that TJ Dillashaw tried to do the same thing and that Usada was trying to write a new rule stating that you had to wait the six months because it was rumored that TJ Dillashaw was trying to do the same thing to rehab his shoulder. But yeah. I read it somewhere. I was trying to look it up right now, but I can't find it. But apparently USADA is in the works of making a rule now saying that you have to wait the six months no matter what. Yeah, they're pretty good, man. Uh, you know, as much as I don't like them, uh, they're pretty good. They, 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 I don't like them. I don't like them. Those you guys know, just show up at all hours of the day. I, I don't I don't like them. I don't like USADA. But you know what? You know, they're, they're, they're pretty good at what they do. And, and uh, they're diligent. I'll tell, I'll tell you that. You know, they're diligent. And you know, they are, for the most part, I would say it's probably all UFC fighters are probably 99.9% .9 clean. There is the exception because there is there is uh, chemists out there that are ahead of the curve with USADA. Yes. And these guys get on the shit, but then USADA catches, catches it. up. But then these new chemists, they get on a new thing, you know. And and uh, so there's people out there, very few though, because it takes a lot of money uh, to be ahead of them. And... Um, yeah yeah so it's pretty much it all right coach i think that's it for this week thank you for your time this week again like always we'll see you next week